Hey, you dorks, this is Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you are listening to The Dorkening. Hi, I'm Brian Johnson, and although you probably accidentally stumbled across it and have no idea why you're watching it, you are in fact watching The Dorkening. Hello, this is Tom Kenny, voice actor, uh, the voice of the Ice King on Adventure Time, and SpongeBob SquarePants. Bah, meow. Oh, Gary the Snail, too. Hey, guess what you're filling your eye holes and ear holes with? The Dorkening! Oh, I love the Dorkening. Very popular in Ooh. And Bikini Bottom. Hi, I'm Lou Ferrigno. You're watching The Dorkening. And you know what? You don't like me when I get angry, so don't get me angry. You better keep watching The Dorkening. Hey guys, this is Felissa Rose, and you're watching The Dorkening. Hey guys, it's Courtney Palm. We're shooting Death House, and you're watching The Dorkening. This is Anthony Michael Hall, and you're watching The Dorkening. Stay tuned, my friends are going to show you what entertainment's all about, baby. The Dorkening. <laughs> The Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <coughs> it's scary. And that's Deadly Grounds Coffee, our awesome sponsor. A little mom and pop shop in Connecticut make the absolute best coffee you'll ever have. But you know what? You're not here to talk about coffee. We have a very special show Saturday. Happy Saturday, all. Uh, and I would say, hey, you guys, we have an awesome show scheduled. Amazing guests. And uh, yeah, so RW, how are you doing, my friend? Hey, hey, we are we doing are awesome. awesome. We got some incredible guests on the show today, and we are definitely going to turn it on. Um, and... Uh, before we get started, at first I want to introduce Steve Gustafson, who's going to introduce the rest of the people who are here. But first I want to just quickly say, th thanks, thanks. Take it away, Steve. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dorkening, and welcome to the 50th anniversary of the Electric Company. Um, I have been a proud participant for many years on this show, and uh, I'm just delighted that uh, RW and Leo were able to put this together uh, to give us the opportunity to uh, to reunite after many, many years uh, and talk about the show and have some remembrances. Um, I'm going to first introduce um, the one and only Hattie Winston, who uh, everyone in the show remembers as uh, as Sylvia, and also as Valerie, the librarian, uh, easy reader's girlfriend. Um, <laughs> and we have uh, June Angela, everyone knows as Julie of the Short Circus, and also Melanie Henderson, who played Kathy from the Short Circus. And then audio-wise, we have uh, Danny Segrin, who played the amazing Spider-Man on the show when he was introduced in the, I think it was the fourth season. Um, so he's with us as well, but uh, he's only here with us in voice. Our a chance to uh, to kind of get into a little bit of uh, history on an actually groundbreaking and amazing program that uh, premiered 50 years ago this year. So, 
I actually had a thing that I uh, I wanted to ask uh, Steve and June if you if you remember um, the first week where we were in that uh, lunchroom uh, working on dances uh, where I thought I was going to get fired. I don't know if you guys thought so when we um, we first had this guy Louis St. Louis, a choreographer uh, who was putting us through the paces for dancing and. Uh, I just remember seeing Irene flinging herself through the air and he wasn't pleased with what she was doing and I can't dance. So I thought, <laughs> and eventually he just stormed out. You know, he just, he, he, I can't remember if he said, I'm so disappointed in you or some, something about all of us. And he left us sitting there and just stormed out. And for about, it seemed interminable, but it was probably like an hour and a half we were sitting there and then Pat Birch came in basically to save the day and became the choreographer. But, but I remember sitting there thinking, oh my God, I'm 13 years old. I just quit a, a musical, a, a Broadway musical to come do this. And now I've probably just lost my first TV job because <laughs> clearly he's the boss and he, he hated what we were doing. So I didn't know if you guys uh, had any memory of that. Uh, I vaguely rehearsal. You know, I I only remember when when Pat Birch came in, yeah. and took over, and you yeah. know things became. I mean, she was tough. There was no question about it. You know, she was she she put us through the paces, but she she had more patience, I think, and she yeah. was certainly um, you know she worked with us until we got where she wanted us to get. So, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, one of the things that surprises me that Louis St. Louis was choreographing, yeah, because <laughs> he was a pianist. <laughs> so he probably stormed out of there because he didn't know what the heck he was doing. Now, am I, am I giving the wrong Lewis? Is it Lewis Johnson? No, is Lewis Johnson is an incredible choreographer, but Lewis St. Louis is a piano player. That's right. So it, it, I think it was Lewis Johnson, and he, he oh, was even, and he okay. was even uh, more strange that he would be choreographing a children's show. Yeah, because he yeah. was a he was a stickler. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I don't remember. Okay. I just remember a lot of fun with Joe Raposo. Yeah. Uh, Joe was so great, uh, yeah. so fun to work with, so easygoing. Um, I loved when we sit around the piano on set and worked on the songs as he would sometimes come in with them just fresh off the, the paper practically. Mm -hmm. And we'd start working on them and it was just great. Yeah. Do, do you guys remember we had to go uh, after work and record stuff. Yes. You oh, guys yes. remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, was, yeah. it seemed like so many songs. We had to do, oh, my we had to God. pile them together, you know, oh, in a yeah. recording session and say, okay, just one more, just one more, just one more. Yeah. And we would go yeah. through like a dozen songs. Yeah. And this was after the public, after we had worked in the studio all day. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Was that recording studio was on 57th Street, I think? Yeah. 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 It, was, it used to be a yeah. church. And yeah. they, they turned it into a, uh, a recording studio. Because I remember when we were doing the album, that's where we recorded a lot of the songs too. For mm -hmm. the, yeah. Did you, Hattie, did you get uh, punchy? Because I know that we, we got very punchy at a certain point when, when we were, you know, five or six songs into those recordings. Absolutely. And we would just start, you know, giggling. And, yeah. and Joe would be like, oh, okay. Oh, here they go. <laughs> but we were tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we worked all day. Oh my! I'm sorry, but we're tired. You know. Yeah, and did we have to get to the studio on Does our? Does anybody own? have a lot of? Oh, yes. <laughs> we did. Yeah, about the first away. season when we were at the uh, the other studio before we moved across town yeah, with the uh, uh, Sunny Fox down in the uh, doing a children's show down in the uh, and we would rehearse. Yeah, we, we had the green room. It was that was. Um, God, it was a well-known show with a lot of big, um, you know, they had a huge space down there. Yes. And they had these, like, bleacher seats all around. Yes. We could look down from the green yes. room and, and watch the them shooting. Yeah. We, were, we, were, we were working on uh, uh, choreography and, you know. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, we did have to get each other. We, we did have to get ourselves there. Hattie. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought I remembered that. We, yeah. after work, we had to actually get ourselves to the studio on mm -hmm. our own. Mm -hmm. I never got reimbursed for that. 
<laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I used to take the subway, and the kids in the subway after the show started to run, they used to look at me and go, "Hey, you guys!" We yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. So no, we we took the uh, subway and whatever. Subway. Yeah. Yeah. If you took if you took the bus or, or you always got you know there was something going to happen. Yeah. Somebody would recognize you for sure. Yeah. yeah. I it's think the worst. We, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Mel. I was going to say when we when we moved into the other studio on I think it was 80th or 81st Street, mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 like on 81st and Bro 80th and Broadway. Yeah, I, yeah, Broadway. I thought, yeah. oh, this is great. I live on 82nd and Riverside, so it's going to be really easy for me to get there. <laughs> and I couldn't understand why I was always, you know, racing down the street to get there on time. And I really just lived three blocks away, but <laughs> somehow. I lived on the east side, and I had to take the bus across uh, from the 79th Street bus all the way across Griffith Park. I mean, Griffith Park. I mean, part, you know, Central Park, uh, and then get off and then walk, what, two blocks to where the studio is. And we were just down the street from Zabar's. Uh, we had Zabar's, which was great. Yeah. Everybody remember their, like, audition, like, going in there and trying oh. out for the show? Oh, Yeah. Don't. I remember. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, we I, we I had remember, a. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. Go ahead. June. No, I was just going to say they were ahead of its time because originally they did not ask for, um, you know, only children who, who were uh, black or white were performing at that time. And so they didn't even think of looking at someone like me. And I remember my agent called and said, listen, just just look at her. Just look at her. So my, my audition was very important. And I went and they they looked at me and they said, oh, okay, this is good. And, and they were groundbreaking at that time because to have a, a diverse cast, mm. how many years, 50 years ago, I guess. Oh, my God. That was, um, oh yeah, that was, that was, it was revolutionary. It was groundbreaking yeah, yes, to do it that. Was, it was. Yeah, talk about diversity. We were way ahead of the curve. Yes. We were. You know, we were. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. We did have a question come in, and actually, we got a ton of people watching. So, if you have questions, don't yeah, be shy. Yeah. In the show, notes. and uh, you know, I'll make sure I try to get to uh, you know all the questions I can. So, uh, uh, Cullen Pittman is saying, uh, "Is it true Paul Dooley was one of the writers and also did voices for some of the cartoons on the show?" Yes, yes, yeah. he was. yes. And Paul, it, it's very interesting because Paul and I have become friends. Paul is still, he goes to yoga class every week. He goes to Pilates classes. He's teaching. And Paul is now in his 90s. Wow. Amazing. Well, he's in his 90s. And he is just about, and um, he and Winnie, um, oh God, what's Winnie's last name? Winnie wrote Wicked? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. God. Yeah, so he and his wife, they're fabulous, and he's in his 90s, and he is doing just fine. Wow. It was an amazing group of writers. The whole the whole bunch of them were, and they were just crazy and, yeah. you know, fun and, you know, very indie. And you know. crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, were, they were writing material and creating skits that were actually over the heads of most of the kids. Yeah. The educational of it was always present and always there but a lot i mean julia grown up you yes. know the kids aren't ever going to yes. get it. The parents are going to get it but not the kids and so oh, many of the kids had that aspect going on mm -hmm. you know the education still always came through it was very yeah. clear but the basics of the the, the skits and, and the pieces had a lot of fun and adult elements to it so yeah. that was what made it i think great for the parents to watch Mm -hmm. while they were watching with their, kids. with their kids. When we grew up, then we were able to watch and go, oh my gosh, that's like Otto Preminger, the director that Rita is uh, mimicking. Or, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, how brilliant these writers really were. And then mm. how fortunate we were, Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder, all these people doing cartoons. Oh yeah. And Mel Brooks. And at that time, yep. we were, oh, that's Letterman. I remember walking into the green room one day and Gene Wilder was in there waiting. Wow. Yeah. The Adventures wow. of Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So speaking of the green room, actually, uh, so question, a couple questions came in, uh, Robin and Jeremy, I'll get to them in just a second. But since you're talking about the green room, uh, one of the things the electric company was, it, it really, uh, you know, broke through through the skylight with, with CGI, you know, it was using it so early yes. on, uh, you know, with it being so new, especially on TV. How was it, you know, working with, with CGI, you know? It was a torment. <laughs> <laughs> If you, the, the, the worst phrase you would ever want to hear is the chroma key is tearing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it, it, it was cutting edge technology, it but was. they really didn't know quite all the problems with it. We were sort of the guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they had, when they introduced, you know, the comic book, the Spider Man comic book, well, Spider Man was. Spider-Man's blue, right? So then they couldn't use blue, blue screen, red, they had to yeah. use green screen for him. And then the words would come in and they were on a different screen. color screen. Yeah. So it, 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 was, it was more technical than I really wanted to have to be aware of, but you know, just that one phrase, I just hoped not to hear that phrase after we had finished it with the keys. Oh yeah, yeah. Of, uh, that was a deadly Spider -Man, phrase. <laughs> speaking of Spider-Man, Danny, you're still with us. I'm here. All right. Uh, do you have stories that, that you remember with these guys and, and being spidey for the electric company? I'm sorry. I, I didn't quite hear that. I'm getting about half of what you're saying. Um, I said, do you have some stories to tell of your experience as the first spidey? Uh, he's, he's asking if uh, you have stories to tell of being the first Spider-Man on TV. Well, I do remember um, the first time I appeared, we didn't have a costume, so we, we had borrowed the one from Marvel Comics, which had webbing under the arms, and um, because I was always on the green screen, that webbing would kind of key out and would look really strange, and the, the costume did a little too closely in, in some areas, and that was a concern, so we, next time I was on, we, we had actually had a costume made, and we had made some, some, some uh, changes in the way we did things, but... But uh, I know that when I came out the set for the second show, the, all the people in the office were, were watching to see what the, if we had worked on all our problems. It was kind of a slightly awkward situation, but uh, it worked out fine. Awesome. Uh, which, makes, which makes me think of Grisha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Our she customer. Was, yeah. And yes. 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 And Lee. Uh, Me, yes, and Mickey. Yes. Oh, yeah. Those were the people who who kept us together. Hair and makeup and wardrobe. Those are the people we spent a whole lot of time. A whole with. lot of time with, right? Uh, and and we were doing innovative. They were doing innovative things at that time because yeah. it was prepare. It was preparing me. For example, when I started doing television, I'd already done it. On, on the electric company. So mm. I knew stuff that I didn't even know I knew. Simply <laughs> because, no, truly, because, because of the electric company. You know, I had been standing around for costume fitting and some of the actors um, would be getting all upset. And I'm like, well, this is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not a long time, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, Robin is asking. Uh, so the the child actors uh, did they go to school on set or uh, and what was your schedule like? No, no we. I, I didn't, didn't go. I had a regular schooling uh, life, and I would go to school and then go to the studio and record, and then come home and do homework. But that was after going to Media Sound and recording, pre-recording the next week's all the songs we had to do. And then after going to rehearsal for all the choreography that we had to do, <laughs> then then go home and do homework, go to school like a you know regular. I went to a regular school, and uh, come back and work the next day for uh, for the rest of whatever we were doing that day. It was great though. I really enjoyed it. Wow. Steve, did, did you? Yeah, I, did I, was you LS, I was at LSA. I was at LSA. That was what that was what I was going to ask you. I uh, went to Lincoln Square Academy. You and I both uh, went to during the, that time period. School. Yeah, I was in. Uh, it was junior high school, basically. 
Yeah, and it was uh, across from Lincoln. Well, Link, it was across from Lincoln Square, and it was called Lincoln Square Academy. And it was a school designed uh, predominantly for kids that were in the industry. Uh, so the curriculum was set up. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think we, we to work have lost or do whatever you need to do. The, yeah. The, the funny thing about uh, LSA, uh, another uh, you know odd uh, thing about it is that my my parents were uh, among the handful of parents that created that school. Wow. Um, we were. I, I was in professional children's school, which was the same kind of school, and they decided to break off and create uh, this this new school, Lincoln Square Academy. Uh, and we had a lot of uh, kids who who uh, went to the ballet school uh, in Lincoln mm. Center. Uh, I just remember sitting around with them, and they were they were sewing their toe shoes. You know? <laughs> uh, the thing about school for me uh, was that uh, school didn't care as long as I got straight A's. They didn't care where I was as long as I handed in my work. Uh, work only cared about me showing up to tape the things that I needed to tape. And my father figured that I was at one or the other. So I just sort of managed my own time when I was 13. You know, if I didn't have to work and I didn't have schooling that I needed to turn in, I would go to the movies and kind of nobody really was watching. So I did what I wanted as, as long as I, you know, did all the work that everybody wanted me to do, you know. So it's an, it was an odd uh, experience. And I don't think 50 years ago, I don't think we, did we have onset schools at that time? In, not in New York, in Los Angeles. Yeah. No. Yeah. California, yeah, but not, yeah. not New York. The child okay. labor laws were, they were different for some reason between New York and California. And that, LA, right, yeah. right, right. And you guys had a guardian, but but I didn't. They they didn't quite figure out how to do that because my my mother had died a few years beforehand. So they kind of were like, "Well, she's thirteen. I guess she'll be fine." So <laughs> and you were you were fine. You were just fine. <laughs> I just remember that you were always so smart, so you did fine. <laughs> you know, I I, uh, I I found my way. I found my way. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you another little known fact is that uh, in the third season when I was 15, I was uh, living alone. So there you go. I was uh, living in an apartment by myself. You know, going, finishing school. I, I don't know who, if everybody knew. Um, but I just kind of was keeping on, keeping on, and I was doing a television show, so I had enough money. Right. Uh, but I don't recommend it. But <laughs> that I, was that was my experience. You could have come over and had some greens or something. Like I would have loved that. I loved that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, you guys mentioned earlier. Uh, June mentioned, you know how. Uh, electric company really broke the mold, you know, trying to hire a diverse cast. Jeremy is asking, uh, why do you think there's still a struggle to have diversity on of uh, a lot of these shows? Wish I had an answer to that. Yeah. Well, we how do you think? If we're going back again to um, Asian people, the first, the very, very first um, sitcom on television was called Mr. T and Tina, and it starred Pat Morita. Um, and it was about you know him and his family. I played his daughter, and that was in 1976, and that was the first ever American Asian show. And then 20 years later, they had the Margaret Cho show, which everybody thinks now is the first American show because nobody remembers that far back before that. And then 20 years after that, we had Fresh Off the Boat um, and Dr. Ken. So that's a long time in between shows for for asian people asian american people but yeah i think i think maybe people are speaking out now that this generation is a little more vocal about hey we're here too we're americans and we have stories so i think in that respect the world is getting a little more open to other people's ethnicities perhaps but i, I this it's week. still hard it's still hard yeah this week hard. Yeah. this week yeah. i think it's happening this week 
and I think one of the, the main reasons that they're having so much trouble with diversity is that you don't have diverse people in the positions of power. Right. So that the people who are uh, uh, putting the shows on the air, selecting the shows, they're only coming from what they're familiar with and they're not interested in going beyond their comfort zone. Right. right. Um, so in my opinion, that's why we still to this day, June, have so much trouble with diversity. And the thing that uh, troubles me is that everybody is talking about diversity this week. Mm -hmm. So my concern is what's going to happen next week. Right. You know, right. When, we're, when we're no longer the flavor of the month, if you yeah. will. As a kid, it can be sustained. Exactly. Will yeah. they be able to sustain this? And um, we have to have people that look like us in control. Right. Otherwise, it's never going to change because people don't want to give up their power. Um, yeah. So that's just my little humble opinion. I, I, absolutely that is the that that's the that is the way of things the, yeah. there's this you know there's this cyclical thing of you know there has to be more diversity yes there does yes we'll, yeah. we'll work on it mm -hmm. and then it ebbs again I, I think part of it though comes from the fact that a lot of the writers are very young and don't have the history life experience history so they're coming from a place of whatever is current in in front of them at the moment right. rather than having understood and lived through you know the 60s and the 70s and even the 50s and, and i think it's just that they they're not well versed enough to know that there's much more to the to the, the dynamic and the whole the whole thing the whole the way the system was to know that there's it's not just pardon the expression black and white mm -hmm. you know exactly and uh, most of them don't even know that a show that we're talking about the electric company even existed right yeah they right. Don't know because no one is interested in the history of television, correct the history of writing who came before you no one is interested in that no, and it started with Sesame Street. Yes. You know, they had a very diverse. Yeah. No Asians. No, <laughs> really? That's true. Yes, that's true. No that's Asians. Asian. That's true. Uh, Although, yeah. um, if you go a little farther back, Gene Roddenberry, when he created Star Trek, made yes. sure his show was very mm -hmm. diverse. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it started with him, but he kind of said, we all need to live together, and maybe someday in the future we will. So he was a very bright man where he took and he tried to show, you know, that or whatever. So, I mean, I don't know what before Star Trek did it, but definitely Star Trek, you right. know, was very diverse. Yeah. He had the vision. He definitely had the vision. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. We had a question come in uh, for Danny. Uh, first, Jeremy was saying, uh, "What the hell is a chroma key?" And correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's 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 a uh, a solid color mat that the computers use to cut out. Uh, so and then it, it gets this little squiggly line around yeah. your uh, uh, outline around a person, yeah. and it's, it looks like it's tearing. It, uh, it looks like the, the page is tearing. Yeah, it, it's uh, yeah. So uh, Jeremy, uh, green screen. That's the, uh, and because of the tearing, that's also why Disney has the new thing, where they have the um, uh, the wraparound screen instead of doing a green screen. It's like within. Uh, they're filming with it at the same time. So, what so doing uh, the Mandalorian, yeah, yeah, it, and it's amazing uh, technology. Uh, so, Jeremy's asking for uh, for Danny. Uh, <laughs> didn't get to keep the costume, and where is it now? Well, there were there were two costumes <clears throat> that were made uh, for the show ones, and because because Spider Man was such a popular character, I had a, I actually had an agent that was booking me for, for personal appearances around the country, so I had to have my own costume made, which I have. In my house here. Oh, nice. I've been, I've been, oh. I have been doing in the last five years. I've been doing uh, a number of comic book conventions, comic cons, and I just I don't I don't wear the costume. It seems to have shrunk over the years. I don't know what's wrong with it, <laughs> it <doesn't> anymore. <laughs> Any, anyhow, um, I, I do bring it along and I hang it over a chair when I'm 
by selling autograph pictures at the Comic Con. But, uh, oh, so, but I, I was I mean, 90% of what I did was on, was on, was on, on I was alone on this green screen, and then they they put they put the, the character into a comic book format, you know, in these, mm. these frames and and um, and I, I never spoke on the show. It's only the comic balloons, you know. When, when I spoke, it was written out there. That was actually a, 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 a ploy to have, make the kids have they had to read because you know the show was for was, was a remedial reading shows for the seven to ten year olds who didn't learn to read the first time around. You know when they were in first and second grade. So that was um, in contrast to Sesame Street, which, which was a pre reading show. Now, I also worked on Sesame Street with the, with the Muppets. It was funny, I worked in the same studio on 81st and Broadway there, Reeves Teletape. So that crew, the crew there, they're like, who's back again? What, what's going on here? <laughs> yes, Anyhow. the same people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, there's actually a, uh, a question about that as well. That uh, Cullen uh, Pittman is saying, is it true that some of the animators from Ses Sesame Street, like uh, John Cordy, Cliff Roberts, Bruce Caird, and the Hubleys worked on the electric company as well? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't know, not, I don't know about that, but um, I know Joe Raposo worked at both shows. <laughs> yeah, there were so many animators. There were there were there were such a uh, there was such a variety of uh, of uh, short uh, animated pieces, mm -hmm. uh, and they they were so inventive. So many of them. There there's there's uh, there's a couple of them. Uh, one, uh, Gordon, you drive me up the wall, uh, and this woman is saying to her husband, Gordon, you drive me up the wall. And he's like, oh, okay, hop on. And he drives her up the wall. <laughs> Little <laughs> funny things built into these uh, very wonderful animated uh, pieces. I think my favorite one was the one with the, the hip cats. Oh, yes. one with the hip cats. Very stylized animation oh, yes. with those cool cats and the big hats, you know, yes. kind of zoot suit style. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that one. Yeah. I, yes. I think it might be on one of these if I remember. Oh, oh I'm yes. sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's on one of those. Yeah. And of course, yes. the classic, you know, the plumber have come to fix the sink. Yes. <laughs> you know. Who is it? Yeah, it's who is it? It's the plumber. You know, I've come to fix the okay. sink. <laughs> being so, being that age, you know, 10, 13, however old you guys were at the time, who was the person that you were like the most of that you're like, I can't believe I'm, you know, a 10, 12 year old kid and I'm working with this person? Like, who, you know, in your, in, it might not even be just the electric company, but because I know you guys did other things as, as kids, actors. Um, who was the one person that you just could not believe that you were like standing next to or whatever? I think for me, everybody was kind of like family. So mm. we didn't think yeah. in terms of, oh, wow, this is so and so. Or this yeah. is so. We're just like, hey, this is, hey, this is Morgan. This is Rita. Yeah. You know, this, this is right. Patty. This, yeah. You know, so I don't think we, I never felt. That way, I just felt no. that these are people that I, I love being with and coming. Wow. With. So it's like, oh, it's just Gene Wilder. Well, that's well, the thing, you, you know, these, uh, news, these, so. these, you were lucky. <laughs> Go these ahead. Are, you know, these are just people, they, right. you know, they, they have to figure out how to do a scene just like everybody else. They have to start from scratch, just like everybody else. And, you know, it's a job and right. it's, it, it, sometimes they're amazing things can happen, but it's moment by moment, figuring out how to do a thing and then you know doing it uh so it's it, it's it's kind of a, the whole thing is kind of honorable in that you know uh the the thing that i so, sort of would would pinch myself about is just being able to do something that i love with people who love doing what they're doing right uh who you know each scene would have a different problem that needed to be solved like how do we do this and you know what's the rhythm of this thing and to then solve those things together and come up with, from from nothing, come up with magic, is it's just a, you know an ongoingly amazing thing. It's yeah. it's a lot of times it's hard work where you've got like you've been doing something for ten hours and you're like I wish we could just get this, but then you get it and it's magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean I'm a I'm a writer and an actor as well. Again, I haven't done the amount of stuff that you guys have done, but 
Um, I know what you mean. I do a lot of independent stuff and, you know, independent stuff is the hardest because, you know, you might be acting in the scene and holding the boom in the next shot. So you do everything. And it, and it gives you this feeling of like, wow, we're working as a team to figure out how to make this thing work. And exactly. one time I did this independent project in the woods, in the middle of the woods with no electricity and we, we needed light. And we take two LED flashlights that were like this big around to a tree. And that was our light. And it, the shot came out phenomenal. And I'm like, right. oh, my God, we used two flashlights. Look at this scene. Like, Hollywood couldn't have been done that. You know, like, it just was beautiful. So I know what you mean about working together and, and stuff. And, you know, it. I just didn't know if, you know, because sometimes, you know, you're on set and you fanboy or fangirl on someone. And you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's this person. But for you, you were just a fan. You were just, yeah. you're an actor, yeah. I'm an actor, you're an actor, so I'm an actress. We're just doing our thing. But right. I just didn't know if, you know, outside of electric electric company if you worked on something you're like oh my god i can't believe i'm working with tom hanks or or whatever if there was some person uh you know celebrity wise that you ever met that was like i can't believe i'm meeting this person or even then is it just like they're another person well that happened much later in life when um when i did a film with clint eastwood and i couldn't believe that i was actually there with clint eastwood and all the stories that I'd heard about him were actually true. He was very quiet. Uh, he, uh, there was always a piano. And when the guys were setting up, he'd be off tinkling somewhere on the piano. Um, and one day we were waiting for a setup. And so I sat next to him and I asked him, how did he do all the, how did he wear all those hats? at the same time as the writer and the director and the star. And he said something that has stuck with me forever. He said, um, I hire people that know what they're doing and I let them do their job. And that he said, and then that's it. That's yeah. what you do. Uh, and he never raised his voice. Uh, I remember when I was doing my very first scene with him, and so I'm standing in place, ready to go. And I was used to the AD going, you know, or the director going, action. And then all I got was, Hattie, are you okay? <laughs> 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 I said, yes, I'm fine. <laughs> and, and I just stood there. And so he taps me again and he says, Patty, you okay? <laughs> yes, I am just fine. <laughs> I didn't know that that was my cue. Yes. yes. To enter the scene <laughs> because I was the first one entering. I didn't know that I'd never worked with anyone who did that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> all the crew, the crew just laughed at me. <laughs> they just laughed because it was my first time ever working with Clint Eastwood. And I, and I was so embarrassed. And he said, like, no, it's okay. Just when you're ready, go. Wow. <laughs> he said, let me tell you something. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, now, uh, yeah. I, I know Danny has, uh, I know it's a little bit of an issue uh, with the setup we have for him here. So I just wanted to repeat the question uh, and give him a chance to answer as well. So uh, Danny, RW was asking, uh, during your career on Electric Company and even past it, uh, was there any celebrity that you had a fanboy moment uh, like, uh, oh my God, I, you know, I'm, I'm working with this person or, or, you know, did a celebrity come up at you with a con and say, you know, uh, I'm the reason you're the reason I'm acting because you know Spider-Man or something like that. Well, because my face never showed, I never spoke on the show. That people didn't recognize me on the street. But um, I, I did do a show. Um, it was uh, probably it's Frankie Fourth Electric Company. It's called Who's Afraid of Opera for public television, and I worked with, with one of them, maybe the greatest uh, opera singer of the 20th century, Joan Sutherland. You may not even know it. A lot of people don't know opera, but I, I did like uh, eight shows with her. Uh, with, there were puppets on the show, and in one of the one, in one of the shows, because I was a dancer, there she was she was getting a dance lesson, and I, I told the producer, "Let me do that job. I could be the I could be the ballet the ballet master." So 
I got to, I got to dance with Joan Sutherland. On, 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 on wow. wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There was a there was a moment that uh, I I remember in the sh in the show during during uh, w when we were working on a, a scene actually between setups where when this happened I thought this is a moment that I need to remember mm -hmm. and I, I I it was Rita and I think it was you Hattie I'm not sure uh, we the, the, we were three witches. Mm -hmm. And we had these long black robes on and, you know, the pointy hats, but, and we were waiting for them to finish setting up. Uh, and somehow the conversation round or wound around to Jerome Robbins and the way he choreographs mm -hmm. and that he doesn't like to have the dancers rest on any beat. So Rita, you know, who was in West Side Story, which was choreographed by Jerome Robbins, demonstrated what what she was talking about about this and she did a little piece of uh i like to be in america and there's a there's a point in uh, in that where it's da 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 and she moved she did she did the da 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 because she was demonstrating right that jerome robbins does not like anybody to stop so to see her do this dance in a witch's costume in the back of my mind i'm thinking this is a moment. I need to remember this moment. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. I don't know. Was it was it you? Were you in the? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. You know when was... you were talking about Rita, Melanie, um, a moment for me, but I didn't know it at that time. Rita played um, Tup Tim, a role in the movie, and the King and I with Yul Brenner. Mm. And years later, I got to play the same role, Tup Tim on Broadway, in yes. the King and I, with Yul yes. Brenner. And she came to see the show backstage afterwards, and she said, Junie, you better watch out. I still remember my lines from the show. <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this is Rita Moreno, and I worked with her as a kid, and here I'm playing the role she played, you know, years yeah. later. But Amazing. that moment occurred till I was, you know, an adult afterwards. And then um, Jerome Robbins, he was the choreographer for King and I, too. And mm. I didn't know it at that time. You know, you go, hi, you know, or Mr. Rogers, Richard Rogers. And years later, mm. he wrote Sound of Music. Mm. This man choreographed all these incredible things. And, you know, mm. you're just nice to see you, you know, like, like, <laughs> but um, that Rita's thing, that yeah. was, uh, that was some like circle of history, I guess you want to say. Very cool. Us. The thing I love about Rita so much, and I think you probably all can agree on this, is that no matter when you run into her, if you run into her even years later, she greets you as if it was yesterday. Exactly. And it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. How are you? What's going on in your life? What's happening? She's so, so a present with you, yeah. at the, you know, whenever you see her. And I just love that about her. I just love it. She's just a great person and a great talent. So. He is. Yes. Wow. You know, I'd like to take a second, if it's okay, uh, to, to mention Greg Burge. Yes. Um, yes. Greg, you know, Greg was really, he and I were very close. Um, and uh, I think the loss of Greg was uh, such, a, not a loss for, I mean, it's a loss for us, but it was also a loss for, for Broadway, for the industry, mm. for, for everyone. He was an incredible talent. Um, I don't know a, a dancer that, that blew me away more than, than Greg. Um, I just, just for, for the heck of it, the other night I watched Chorus Line and wanted to watch Greg's uh, song uh, and the dance that he did. And it just, it's, it's still absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Mm. Incredible talent. Yeah. And uh, I miss him terribly. Miss yes. him terribly. And he was the sweetest guy. Yes. He was the sweetest guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He really was. You know, guys, you keep breaking up on me. And I, so I'm kind of like half here and half not here. <laughs> um, it's like you'll, you'll freeze up and I'll lose like 30 seconds of, of, of dialogue, you know, and then I, then I'm like, what are they, where are they? What's going on? So <laughs> we're we're going to go back and voice over all of that later anyway. So don't worry about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> right, Cause I, I, I'm, I'm missing so much. My wife is sitting here going, God, the internet connection. What the heck's going on? So, anyway, 
So, uh, <laughs> we had a couple other questions coming out, uh, come in, and we still got a bunch of people watching. So don't be shy. Post the questions, and I'll get to them as best as I can. Uh, Steve Jordan was asking, didn't Alphabet Soup come out around the same time or earlier? Alphabet Soup. Yeah, I'm not sure about oh. I remember Zoom, but I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Zoom. I don't... Well, Zoom was out of Boston. Right. Yeah. 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 Zoom came out of Boston, and all those kids were basically off the street. They weren't. They really weren't professional kids. They were just mm -hmm. kids that they grabbed who, you know, they felt had a look or could sing or do something that they felt would be good for the show. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't. They the, the process that we all had to go through, the audition process. I remember having five auditions in total wow, wow. yeah uh, each one having a different element to it obviously they they had the main thing was that they wanted us all to be able to sing and to play our own instruments mm -hmm. uh because they didn't know where they were going to take the group as as a whole going forward with potential concerts or other appearances uh so i know that was an important factor then there was you know the the skit stuff and then there was, the, we started, as they started to form the, the five of us, bringing us together to see how we were, um, you know, it was a lengthy process. I remember we, we really, you know, took a while before they found the five that they felt fit the bill. So. Interesting. Do you remember uh, after the first season when uh, Irene left and then they had auditions and we, they wanted us at the auditions to to participate in the process, I had never been. Move. I'd never sat on the other side, watching auditions. I mean, it was it was an interesting experience, you know, to see to see people come into the room as I would have come into the room auditioning for something. Um, so yeah, it gave you a new perspective on what that process is like. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hardest thing for me, like you go into an audition oh, yeah. and they they hand you a piece of paper and they're like, "Okay, read this." You're a forty-something lawyer, and you're like, "How do I expect?" To? And you're like, "You, know, I don't know what I'm reading." Like, it's so hard for me to like figure out what they want, and you know, it's I don't know. The audition process for me is literally the hardest thing. Like, I don't know what you want, you know. And, th and they go, try it more floral. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, try it, and they have this big word, and I'm like, I don't know what that means, but I don't want to say I don't know what that means, because then I look like an idiot. So I'm like, okay. And, you know, and then it's not what you're looking for. And I'm like, thanks, see ya. But uh, yeah, I, I, audition process is the hardest thing. I'm actually working on an independent film in August, and the director, writer feels so strongly about my talents that I'm part of this audition process. So I have to watch people, you know, try out for this movie that, and I have to say, yeah, I wouldn't hire that person or that person's awesome. But then I say, who am I to say if that guy's not good enough or, you know, so I have a hard time saying that guy's good or that guy's bad. But, you know, I see someone just like me go, when I was a little kid and I'm like, get this guy out of here. <laughs> you know, but, Auditions are just, they're brutal for me, you know? Just, I think auditions, are, for the most part, are a crapshoot. You know, yeah. you come in with your best intentions, you you know, you give it what you got, and it'll all come down to whether on that day the casting director, you you triggered something from their past. You know, it could have been either they're having a good day or a bad day, or you laughed or smiled like a family member that they have, or you did something that reminded them. Well, I don't think auditions necessarily, you know, what's going on at, at that moment. So, I had an interesting audition for Spider Man um, because I worked on, the, on, on Sesame Street. I knew him as a producer, so I got an audition and I came to the offices there and they gave me the costume and I went into this, I think it was a music room to put the costume on. And there was a, and the, and the director was going to be coming in, he was going to audition me. So I got on top of this five foot high filing cabinet. Which was between in the middle of the room there was a big desk, and between the desk, the final cap, the desk was the door to the room. And so when the director walked into the room, I leaped off the off the filing cabinet, did a half half turn in the air, and landed on the desk in the middle of the room in a Spider-Man pose. <laughs> and he he hired me almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I love awesome. it. I love it. He said, you got, 
I did a few more things for him, but he said you got the job. And that's and you are all in show business, and you know that you don't you don't get a call back. You don't they don't hire you on the, on the first audition. It's yeah. very rare, anyhow. It yeah. Reminds me of Robin Williams' audition for Mark. They said come in and have a seat. He sat down with his head in the chair, and they're like, "Yeah, you got the part." So sometimes <laughs> you get lucky. I I got this role in this pilot episode of a show called Zodiac, where I play Zeus and. I think the reason I got it is I had this wicked big beard and long hair, and I looked like Zeus, or no, sorry, Hades, and I looked like Hades. Um, but the guy didn't. The guy just said, "Hey, what do you like to do? You know, what? Tell me about yourself." And I was cracking jokes and just being myself. And they're like, "Yeah, you got the part." So I didn't have to go. It was the worst of times. It was the <laughs> best of times. You know, I didn't have to figure out what I. They just said, "Be yourself," and let me ask you some questions. And I was like, "Yeah, blah 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 blah." And they're like, "Yeah, you got it." So. That's the auditions that are easy is you just be yourself and you're like, oh, I like, yeah, da, 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 you know, and they're like, you got it. But then it's like, read this. And I'm like, I don't know. Is this guy mad? Is this guy angry? Is this guy crying? Did he just go through a divorce? Did he just have a kid? Like, I don't know how I'm reading this or what you want me to do. And it gets, it's very difficult, but yeah. I think the best, the best auditions are the ones where they give you direction. They yeah. Give you specifics. They say this is kind of what we're looking for. This is the right. tone. This is whatever. That makes it a lot easier. If you're going in cold, you know you're running the risk of going down the wrong path. So exactly. Yeah. And and I agree with Steve. It's like a lot of the times it really is a crapshoot. I know that I have gone to auditions and actually come home and cried because yeah. I, I was so awful, and then I get the job. Mm. So you never know. You really don't you know, know. Yeah. That time when you think, "Oh man, I killed that," yeah. and they went next. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? So you don't know. Even when you prepare, you do your homework. You still never know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like I said. It, it's it's hit or miss. And yeah. You yeah. know, basically, it comes down to the numbers. The more auditions you go on, the better the odds are you're going to nail one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But then what's so incredible to me about this business is that here we are 50 years later mm -hmm. and we're talking about a piece of work that we did all those years ago. And I'm looking at the faces and their smiles, you know, because we just love what we do. Mm. And we keep doing it um, yeah. because ultimately it's about the pleasure that we we create for other people, but it's also about the pleasure that it gives us to be in this creative process. Uh, I think it's phenomenal that uh, we are still here yeah. 50 years it's later. I mean, it's amazing. I don't look the same, but... <laughs> And I know I, I said it before we first came on here, but and I did my funny little th thanks, thanks, but seriously, like I'm 56 and this show was very important to me as a kid. And um, I've called teachers uh, that I had in like fourth grade a few years ago, five years, 10 years ago, whatever, and just said, you made a difference in my life. And I just want mm -hmm. to say thank you. So yeah. you guys did something. 50 years ago, which is incredible to even say, 50 yeah. years ago that I'm thanking you for now. So while you were doing this, you might have just been like, hey, I'm on TV. I got this cool job. I'm working with these cool people. But you made a difference and I'm sure a lot of people's life because he said there's still people tuning in. So people are tuning in to hear your story because you also touched their lives. So yeah. this is why I wanted to become an actor and a writer and an entertainer and whatever is because I didn't have the best childhood. So Electric Company, Brady Bunch, Waltons, whatever show I was watching, I was able to watch a functioning family or a, you know the Electric Company teach me how to read or whatever it was. And these people I knew weren't like, I knew you were actors and you were just getting the message across, but you helped me. So I said, how can I help somebody someday? And I said, same way they helped me become an actor, become a writer, and touch someone's life. So I just wanted to, again, say you made a difference in my life and other people who are watching right now. So for that, I thank you. Leo probably has another question from somebody, and let's take that question. 
Uh, yeah, actually, some other questions came in. Jeremy's asking, uh, I feel a lot of TV shows don't get enough of a chance to develop an audience these days. Do you feel there was more of an opportunity for shows to gather an audience back when The Electric Company was on? I think, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, June. No, 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 that's Melody. Melody. I, I think uh, the, the, the method of, uh, of putting shows on the air was very, very different, you know, in the 70s, even into the 80s and early 90s, where a show could have like at least half a season uh, to find people. Um, I, I remember uh, knowing somebody who, whose husband was on Cheers and uh, she would say, please, you know, tell your friends to watch the show because they hadn't found their audience, mm -hmm. but they eventually did. And it was a, you know, obviously we know it was a hit for many, many years, but now that show might not survive because it would take more than, you know, three, four or five episodes mm -hmm. to catch on. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Scotty Appleseed says, uh, I was a queer little boy from Southern Oregon in a small town. Y'all saved my life, literally. Oh, wow. that's so great to know. Oh, it really great. is. Somebody else just posted, uh, one of my favorite skits was, my name is Kathy. Kathy is my name. And what's funny is that's on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was uh, right here. My One of my favorite feel-good songs on the show was, my name is Kathy. There were times when you all took a break from craziness and just sang groovy song. Uh, Maybe you know what I want to do. Yeah. I want to sing a song hey, with you. Come on and sing a song with me. Come on and sing along with me. My what? name is Kathy. Kathy is my name. My name is Kathy. Kathy, Kathy is my name. I can't remember the rest of the words. Oh, buddy comes in. Words, buddy, buddy comes in, I think. Just and just the same. And then I know <laughs> mine was, I hate to get myself out of, out of bed. And everybody tells me that was so true, even now. <laughs> <laughs> but what was yours, Melanie? I don't, I don't remember. I like to. That no, was awesome, oh, Melanie. I like to sing Thank you and so play much. by music, too. Oh, I that's think that's right. what it was. That's yeah. Right. And then it said something about the words, the words say what I just said or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Melody, yeah. I like to play the drums and ride a bike. That was what? Yeah. 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 It's on YouTube. Look it up. I may or may yeah. not have had something to do with putting it on there. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> what was your question, Jim? How did you pick Kathy? I, I know they allowed you know, us to pick our name. I... I don't I don't remember picking the name is the thing um, you know I know from from uh, from Steve you know he, he had asked me that one day and I and I thought I thought they gave us these names but no. apparently they didn't so <laughs> yeah I remember them asking me what you know what do you what do you want your character name to be and because I was a drummer and I was a big fan of Buddy Rich I chose Buddy yeah, yeah. yeah. And I loved Julie Andrews. That's why I was yeah. Julie. Oh, wow. cool. Cool. The coolest part of like sixth grade, I think it was, fifth and sixth grade, is they roll the TV into the classroom and you're like, yeah, electric company time. <laughs> and they plug it in it. and we watch electric company. And I'm like, yeah. So um, that's how I, that's what I remember most about the show. I mean, that in the ch in chin and, you know, uh, letter yeah. man filling the letters and, and, you know, easy reader, that's my name. Uh, 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 you know, but like, I remember it all. Um, you know, uh, uh, Fargo or North Dakota and just like the whole thing, you know, and it, like I said, they bring that TV set in and I'm like, no classwork today. We're watching Electric Company. So, you know, schools really promoted your show. Like they, yeah. every, you know, I forgot what, day, if it was every day or once a week yeah. or whatever, they'd roll that TV I in and yeah. we'd watch Electric Company. So, yeah. Yeah. That was one of my favorite, I think the favorite thing that I did on the show because most people like to think it's, I wish I didn't have to wash. Um, <laughs> with, <laughs> was was um, playing Little Fargo. Ah. And, yeah, getting to play Little Fargo with Skip. Oh, cool. It was a lot of fun. So. I remember. 
<laughs> I in the broccoli one. Uh, I, the what? Broccoli. <laughs> and wine. Uh, uh, do, you, do you remember that one? I do. I do. <laughs> we are the kids known as Whimper. Whimper and, and wine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my God. June, June, do you remember um, it was a takeoff on Tina Turner and Rita was Tina? Oh, and, yes. and I remember Gold that one. May, you know, you, you and Irene and me. Yes. Um, uh, unbutton your heart. I yeah. just saw this posted on on YouTube somewhere, but it's and, yeah. And tell me that you love me. That Did you guys know yeah. that I really was intimidated by y'all's dancing, and <laughs> I really didn't know if I was going to make it through that number? No. Because I mean, you and Irene and Rita were dancers, and I was not a dancer, and I was terrified that at the end of that number. I, if I made it through the number, you know, we were supposed to stop, you know, uh, like this button. And I thought, uh, I, I, I don't know. And, and I kept, I kept not quite stopping. So for me, success was, I finally was able to just do the thing. But, but I just always wondered because you guys were so good at dancing. You were so good at it. And I just was like, I would just like be, okay, I'm just going to watch you guys. <laughs> you, you guys go ahead. You, you dance. And I'll just sit here and watch. Oh, no. I never felt that, Melanie. That, that never came across at all. You were part of, yeah. you were, you know, the dancers. We were the backup of Rita doing the, uh, yeah. she was doing a, <laughs> yeah. I never, yeah. I never felt that, Melanie. It was Interesting. great. It was great. Well, so, I, always, I always felt bad for Robert Grant. Yeah. Robert was not a dancer by any means. Yeah. Any means. And there was the famous Robert sort of two step. You know, that it was oh, yes. one side to one side to one side. That was Robert. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I think Hattie was about to say something. Hattie? Yeah. No, I just wanted to add. I thought I heard something from uh, Melanie and June. Did you say that your names were Annie and May? Uh, Oh no! With no. Tina? No, no. Oh, oh, in that number? Yeah. No. What did I no, thought? Um, she was. Um, it was a takeoff on I Can Tina Turner, and it was I, Unbutton Your Heart with Rita doing the, you know, the big solo. But no, we didn't. We weren't. Um, we didn't say any names there. I think. I think maybe uh, the internet got funny, Hattie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Because. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about how clever the writers were yeah, and they, and they yeah. did so many things. And then for some reason, I thought you said your name was Annie and your name was May, but that was really Tina Turner's name oh. in real life. So oh. I was like, oh my God, they did it again. Interesting. Because the writers were so clever. Yeah. What they were, they were very clever. Yeah, very clever. So. Maybe my mind just invented. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the most. I often hear about um, how some of the songs that we did as a group, you know, were should have been on the radio. Yes. Huh? Oh, yeah. mm. So yeah. good. they were really good. Yep. Yeah. I, just I, wanted tell, I just wanted to tell one funny Spider-Man story. Oh, okay. happened, I think it's like my second or third year. We didn't have much uh, high high tech high tech uh, shots of the show, but so when I would ever when I would I, when I would shoot the web, they would add that post production. But they finally they finally got a web, a big spider web. They made it like black rope or something, but it was a big, a big thing. And the plan was that we go to the set. When I was as I got down to the pose to shoot the web. They would shout freeze, and everybody would freeze in the set. And then they would come in and they would throw the they throw the web out. So the first time we did this, they, they got the pose and they shouted freeze, and everybody froze. And the prop man comes out with the web, and he throws it on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, love it. I guess the prop guy was not really into the show, but it was uh, <laughs> a big loss for quite a lap in the studio. <laughs> And of course, they had to do it again. <laughs> Anyhow, Daddy, I thought you know, there was. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, Danny, we had a funny story. I used to do the narration for the Spidey stories. And one time backstage, or 
um, they were getting ready for your shot and Skip and Rita were on the set and I was in the control room with headphones on so I could hear everything that was going on. And I'll never forget, Skip said to Rita, when somebody hugs you, have you ever farted when somebody hugged you? And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I can hear everything that everybody's saying. And, I, and at that time, fart to me was a terrible word. So I was like, oh, he said fart. Oh my goodness, he said fart. But you didn't know what they were talking behind me when you were setting up for the scene. <laughs> I think that's going to be my new thing. When someone makes me mad, I'm going to say, I'll hug the fart right out of you. <laughs> I know we're running, uh, running a little on time. Uh, we still got a bunch of people watching, more people coming in. Uh, so if you have any uh, last minute questions or uh, thanks or anything, please add them to the show notes. Uh, a bunch came in. Uh, let me see if I can get to them. Uh, let's see. If my mouse will work rightly. Uh, Tom says, uh, I just want to thank you guys for being a huge part of my childhood. Uh, that will stay with me forever. Uh, Colin says, uh, yes, that's the song. Thank you for singing it again. Nikki Daly says, hey, you guys. Uh, no, that's, hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, right, Leo, come on. <laughs> uh, uh, Colin says, uh, I always liked how the writers had fun with words. Uh, Wolfie says, this show introduced me to Spanish. Uh, and uh, Jeremy says, uh, were there any guest actors that weren't really up to the task of being on a kid's show? We'll mm. never tell. <laughs> uh, uh, and also, Wolfie said, uh, Easy Rider, that's my name. I agree with Art. The show really uh, helped me a lot growing up and learning. I uh, put it right up there with Schoolhouse Rock, but the coolest things, Shadow Profiles. Ch wow. Shadow. Yeah. 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 I think that's one that everybody remembers a lot of those profiles, the silhouettes. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. it really was a, a, a perfectly simple but effective way to create the words and yeah. get, get to understand them. It really was. Yeah, yeah. Whoever thought that up, I mean, that's like so simple but pure genius. And you can tell whose silhouette it was, too. You're like, oh, that's Morgan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeremy says, uh, great to see you all. Have a great Saturday. And uh, I just wanted to get a couple things in. Uh, we didn't cover, you know, Electric Company. Uh, I, I grew up with it myself as well. Absolutely loved it. And uh, Danny, you, you uh, introduced me to Spider-Man and I've been a dork ever since. Uh, but the show ran from uh, 71 to 77, reruns until 85. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, special guests that you guys worked with. Mel Brooks, uh, you mentioned, Voices Cartoons. Uh, Carol Spinney came on as Big Bird and Oscar de Grouch. Frank Oz was there as Grover. He also worked with Carol Burnett, Barbara Eden, Diane Keaton, Dean Martin, Joe Namath, Carol O'Connor, Tony Orlando, Dan Rowan, Lily Tomlin, and there's even more. It's just crazy, and uh, I, I want to thank you guys. It's you, you really brought a lot to my childhood. I know RW as well and a lot of people watching. It, it's, uh, you know, we, we can't thank you guys enough. Thank you so thank much for having you. us. Thank you guys for putting this Great together. To yeah, it's a, it's a show that deserves more attention than it gets. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Oh, thank you. So uh, we'll do the uh, the wrap up, uh, and uh, so we will start uh, with with Hattie. Um, where do you like fans interacting with you? And uh, is there anything, uh, any last items you would like to share? Anything you got going on? Any shows you got going on? Well, there is. They can reach me um, on Facebook, and uh, I also have a website, HattieWinston uh, dot com. Um, so just reach out and I'll get back to you. I am in the process of uh, writing a book about this wonderful journey that I've been on. So uh, I'll let you guys know about that. Awesome. Uh, how about you, uh, you, Danny? Same question. Where do you like fans interacting with you? And uh, you got any shows coming up? Uh, I know uh, with COVID and everything, uh, conventions have been a little sparse. Uh, but we are breaking through it. But uh, wh where do you like people interacting with you, and what do you got going on? Well, I'm that's barely not internet connected, so I'm hard to reach. Um, I'm living quietly down here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area, and um, 
one thing, the only thing I'm really doing, and uh, they have been doing them for, for over a year, is I've been doing these comic, comic town, comic book conventions, uh, mostly in the southeast. And, but occasionally I go, to, I've done a few, and I've done Chicago and, and Milwaukee, but I may, I'm, you know, when this whole thing is over, I'm, I'll probably be doing a few more of those. Other than that, I'm living a quiet life here on the beach in South Carolina. Mm. Awesome. Uh, you might want to take a look at some of the conventions we up here we have up here in the Northeast, up in Connecticut. Uh, Rhode Island has Rhode Island Comic Con, which is actually now it's it's just as big as New York Comic Con. Uh, there's one in uh, uh, one, the Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut called Terrificon. That's huge, uh, and you should definitely look into them. It, it's uh, you know it's definitely a show I could see in. Uh, Super, Mega Fest. Super Mega Fest as well. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Melanie? Same questions. Um, well, I'm on Facebook and, you know, feel free to reach out to me there. That'd be great. Um, and I'm uh, creating a short form uh, episodic show right now. So we'll see how that goes. Very cool. Uh, June, same question. Yes, I have. I'm not on Facebook, but um, I have a website, juneangelo.com. And there are projects coming up. But what I'm doing a lot of now actually is uh, audiobooks. So, and it's funny for me because of growing up doing children's and reading things like that. I love doing these. So I have uh, quite a book, uh, quite a, um, a number of books on audible.com. I didn't write, but I've narrated. And some of them I've done many different characters on the same book. And, and there are adult books as well, not just kids books, but uh, there are a lot of those on there too. Oh, that's amazing. I love Audible, especially, you know, with the voice actors doing different voices. You know, it's not just like the same drone thing, you know, you, you well, really. Know. The last one I just finished doing, it was um, 15 major characters. It obviously was not a children's book, but this was um, a novel. And I did not only the, um, the male voices and the female voices in all different ages and whatnot. I love doing that because you can play all the different characters as well as narrate. But um, Audible, yeah, it's great. So. If you look at my name there um, on the Audible website, you'll see there are like over 30 books there and stuff. But, Very but it's cool. Fun. Awesome. Uh, Steve, same question for you, sir. Well, uh, you know, I finally bailed on California, um, and my wife and I are relocating now to uh, the Asheville, North Carolina area. Um, and so we're looking forward to a new begin here. And uh, we are both theater people, so we're also excited possibility of getting invested in the theater community here as there are quite a number of, of theaters uh, you know stage theaters here um, and uh, as you know as RW knows I, I recently published uh, a book called my name is buddy which uh, chronicles not only my life but but also our, my time uh, on spend on the electric company because I thought fans would love a chance to kind of hear a little bit about that since nothing's ever really been written about the show. Yeah. Um, so if anybody's interested, it's available on, on Amazon and uh, Apple and Walmart, whatever it's there. Uh, it's a fun read, easy read. And I, you know, if you like film and television history and all that, I think you'd have a good time with it. Um, but uh, that's, that's kind of where we are right now. We're just getting ready for a new beginning. Um, and uh, looking forward to, to living a better quality of life as opposed to a quantity of it. So, yeah. Well said. Uh, and uh, for everybody watching, definitely check the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. I have a ton of links for all our awesome guests. Uh, so if you didn't, if you uh, you know have a flaky memory like I do and you know forgot what they said, just check in the show notes. It's all right there. You can click away. Uh, speaking of clicking, RW, where can people click and find you? All right. Well, you can find me there. At, there. I always get backwards. OfficialRWMartin.com. You can find me on Facebook. But for, I want to thank everybody for this. Um, this was kind of my brainchild, and I, I can't thank you all enough for being here. And for all you fans out there who tuned in, if you can find them, pick these up. They're on DVD. They're maybe eBay, maybe Walmart, maybe Amazon somewhere. Volume 1 and 2. There's sporadic episodes. But if you really love the show and you want to relive it, pick these up. Uh, back to what Steve was saying. Here's this book. My name is Buddy, The Life and Times of a Former Child Star That Nobody Remembers by Steve Gustafson. And while you're at it, why don't you pick up my book too, Life Inside My Head, A Scatter Tale, Living with ADHD, Families by R.W. Martin. Uh, again, thank you guys so very much from the bottom of my heart for being there as a kid, helping me through tough times. Thank you for being here and sharing your stories. 
wish we could have gone two, three, four hours, but like seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. Take it away, Leo. Thank you. And uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and uh, those DVDs were uh, Shout Factor, I believe. Uh, yeah, so they came out a while ago, so they're harder to find now. But if you browse, if somebody's looking for them, you browse eBay or sometimes Amazon or Walmart or wherever. They're they're out there. Um, I got mine a while ago, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, anytime I want to see you guys sing, Kathy is my name. You know, I just pop mm -hmm. in and relive the ch in chin stuff. And uh, again, I thank you. I know I keep saying it, but you don't know why I put this thing together it was just because you guys were there for me. So thank you. Awesome. Uh, and uh, for me, just Google Leo Pond. You'll find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which, but I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. We have over 30 shows on the network. A lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome shows. And uh, you can find all the links in the show notes. And more importantly, follow these people and you know relive your childhood. Watch Electric Company. You can find a bunch of clips out there or try to find the DVDs. And, uh, you know, just, just, uh, I can't thank you enough as well. And, uh, with that, oh, you forgot, uh, oh, no, never mind. I'm okay. I thought you oh. forgot Danny. You did him. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, half asleep here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, what about Danny? Oh, he went on right. Yeah, yeah, Mitch, right. you can't, can't forget Spider Man, you know, especially yeah. when he did to get the audition, did the flip and did the Spider Man. I, I would have uh, broken both ankles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll catch you guys later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.